Yesterday, Dr. Art Hister told us a new medical study says men may rule the world, but women rule the roost. Apparently, women have marriage power, but that doesn't mean your mate will always stay on the porch, male or female. Dr. David McKenzie is a couples counselor and sex therapist. He drops in every two weeks or so to help us sort out difficult relationship issues. And it is my pleasure to welcome Dr. David McKenzie back to Studio 4 to tell us more. Morning, Fanny. Cheating on your mind today is on the agenda. Yeah, it's a big problem with some couples. Why, for some, cheating is only in the mind and they don't act it out, and why do others act out and cheat? Well, there are three types of cheating. Uh, two involve no emotional connection, and one involves emotional connection. Uh, there's the typical one-night stand. Somebody goes to a conference, they drink too much, and they do something stupid. And oops. <clears throat> and oops. <laughs> and we used to call it an event. An event. A slip-up. <laughs> Yes. And uh, the second kind is that of an affair, where somebody becomes emotionally involved. And uh, that's much more dangerous to the primary relationship. And usually the cheating starts before the actual sexual involvement, in which they're sharing deep things, they're spending a lot of time with each other, they're mm -hmm. starting to disclose um, um, things about the primary relationship. The third uh, type of cheating is that of the pathological cheater in which even if he or she is getting lots of loving and sex at home, still has this deep urge to go out and be promiscuous and have anonymous sex uh, or sex with uh, somebody that he or she knows. And all of those have different roots of, of what causes those. Um, the affair usually is a result of some form of starvation within the primary relationship. Some needs are not being met. Most of the time it's emotional need for both men and women. Very seldom are affairs sexually based for either men or women. Uh, for uh, the one night stand, that can be either a stupid thing to do mm -hmm. or it can be a result of a sexually starved marriage. But it's usually sexual. Uh, there's nothing more to it for men or women. The third type is pathological, and I've noticed that males especially, in fact there's a study that backs it up, that males who are promiscuous, uh, even if they have a good primary relationship, it's a form of self-medication for clinical depression. And uh, one of the other things I've noticed about males in my own clinical practice who, uh, who are promiscuous and who are pathologically cheating is that uh, they often have a very poor relationship with their father. With their father. Yeah. Now, that's, I don't have a study to back that mm -hmm. up, but that's my clinical experience. Do men or women, uh, are men or women more likely to cheat on their mate, or do you know? Yes. Uh, I know women fool around. I know mm -hmm. men fool yeah. around. Yeah. Is it more a male thing or a female thing, or does it have anything to do with gender today? Yeah. Uh, you'll probably find uh, more males will, will do that than, than females. But uh, the studies show that both men and women have a high proportion of cheating. And um, you can s sit and take vows all you want, but in the end, when you look mm -hmm. at the st statistics, which I don't have in my mind right now, there is a high proportion in each gender who will cheat. So what about the man who says to you, I slept with her, I don't love her. Yeah. It had nothing to do with my heart. Yeah. But for women, so it's just sex. It meant nothing. Get over it. Well, women will actually be forgiving much more than males will. And um, so a woman will take a man back after a slip up or even an affair, whereas males tend to reject very quickly. They cannot cope with that. Uh, not all males, but a high proportion will. Mm. Um, it's okay for, for me, but not for you necessarily? Yeah. Or they just can't stand the thought that the woman had an affair. Well, I, I actually think it comes from our, our biology, mm -hmm. from our evolution. And um, I hate to say it, but um, as I've said before, you only have to look at the way salmon spawn in the Adam River to understand human sexuality. That there's this deep primordial caveman sense that we can't help it. There's this sense in which we own a woman. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that's not politically correct, and I know women don't like to hear that, but there's something biological about that. My wife. Yeah, exactly. You know. My girlfriend. My woman. My woman. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, men have to overcome that and educate themselves. It's a deep feeling that emerges from our evolution. And it all has to do with reproducing our DNA. It all has to do with making sure we're not cuckolds. When you are having an affair, yes. for whatever reason, mm -hmm. When should you tell your mate? Should you tell your mate? Should uh, say say it's done. The, the relationship You've is had done. An, uh, we oh, can call sorry. it an event, an affair. Okay. And it's over. Yes. Some people say never tell. Yeah. That that happened. It's done. Yeah. Never tell. Yeah. 
Do you think a relationship can carry on and be good yes. if somebody ha lives with the secret? Yes, yes it can. I know of relationships like that. And um, not all rela primary relationships can withstand the shock of knowing that a partner has stepped out like mm -hmm. that. Of course, I try to encourage uh, a, a partner who lets me know that that's happened, try to encourage that partner to reflect on disclosing that uh, rather than live with that secret. I remember when I was a pastor, I counseled a woman um, years and years ago, and she was 80. And she burst in tears telling me that she'd uh, had an affair with a man while her husband was overseas in the Second World War. And I tried to console her and say, you know, you're a human being, try and understand mm -hmm. that those were unusual times. But she could not forgive herself. And so... Well, you, in a relationship too, we don't we fall in and out of love with each other? In a monogamous relationship, it seems to me it's it's cyclical at times. There's, you wake up one morning, you love them badly, the next day you think, I am married to a clown. <laughs> so uh, why do some people, when they go through those cycles, cheat and others don't? Do you know? I'm not sure that cheating, uh, it depends what kind of cheating you're talking about. Or need about. sex outside the marriage. Yeah. Well, if it's pathological, it doesn't matter what the primary relationship mm -hmm. is. They're going to seek it anyways. And that has emotional roots to it. And that person needs therapy. Uh, for an individual who has a one-night stand because of something stupid, that's another thing. If we're talking about affairs, uh, doing, going through a low crisis and, a, 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 and the problems in the relationship, and someone steps out during that time, that's a much different kind of cheating. And so, uh, what was your question? Sorry. Well, that was the question, yeah, really. Like, yeah. how, uh, how do you put it all together? Yeah, I don't how, know. Yeah. But how do you recover from something yeah. like that? Yeah. Well, um, I would encourage couples, if, if they really want a clean conscience, to come clean about that. If they honestly feel that their partner cannot withstand that, then not to disclose. The whole idea of guilt is mm -hmm. not to sit and crush us for the rest of our lives. It is to put us on the right road again. And once we're on the right road, then forget about it. When it serves you, its purpose. Sorry to interrupt, but when do you yeah. think you should forgive somebody who has had an affair, and when shouldn't you? When I, should you leave the relationship? Is there a list you can check off? Yeah, I think uh, there are a lot of variables to that. Um, oftentimes with children, with financial connection, um, mm -hmm. with a common history together, you don't want to lose that. The age of a couple, a couple who's been with each other for 30 years, are much less likely to break the relationship up than somebody who's been with someone for three years. And so uh, there are a lot of variables, and one has to weigh that. Um, normally speaking, if there's been a depth of relationship, a common history, and there are lots of common things, uh, that relationship will withstand it. However, some people can't forgive, as you know. Yeah. Uh, they can still love you in their heart. Yeah. I, I love you madly, but, yeah. but uh, and this could be the ego that comes in that yeah. says, I will not live with anybody who is who has had an affair well, I'll tell or you this. left me. Or a to me, affairs can be lifesavers for a marriage. They're usually cries for help. Affairs are never about the new relationship. They're always about the old one. And so uh, if, if, someone, if your partner has had an affair and you just cannot forgive your partner, maybe you need to look within yourself and what kind of memories of abandonment and, and, so, and pain from your family of origin that, that conjures up. Because a lot of times the inability to forgive and chronological lack of mm -hmm. forgiveness is a result of deep emotional pain from our early attachment. Sure, what if you're just bored in your current then you need relationship? To, then you're you need just to spice it up. Bored, and you, out of boredom, you seek someone else. Okay, but uh, the, the relation, the affair is about the old relationship, and maybe if that can bring you back to start spicing that up and doing different things, um, building space and distance in your relationship, building uh, obstacles, making things attractive. If you're just sitting in front of the TV every day and not communicating mm -hmm. and not doing different things with each other, your marriage will become very boring. Have you seen couples uh, who say, I had two or three affairs? and my wife had three or four and now we're sixty mm -hmm. and we can laugh about it mm -hmm. and yes. it was part of growing up. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've counseled those. 
uh, there's, that comes close to the whole issue of the lifestyle in which couples, younger and older, uh, have said to each other, look, uh, we're, it's, it's mundane, our sex life is mundane, let's bring some excitement into it, let's invite a woman or a man to come into our bedroom in real life, mm -hmm. not just fantasy, or let's begin swinging and invite other couples. And uh, the studies show that if they're in good communication and the marriage is working, that actually their sex life is more satisfying than mm -hmm. monogamous couples. We all know couples uh, who one or the other, and maybe both, but usually it's just one. Yeah. Uh, uh, for an example, let's just use the wife. Yes. She has had an affair yep. with a man, same man, for 20 years. Yes. Still married to the husband. Everybody knows. Mm -hmm. Nobody tells the husband, mm -hmm. but everybody knows. Mm -hmm. And they chat about it in the circles, and it's usually within the circle. Yes. Do you know what I mean? I it's exactly. somebody yeah. else's husband, yeah. and the two of them have been doing it for years. Yes. Yeah. Well, look at Mitterrand of France. He had a mistress, mm -hmm. and everybody knew about it. Everybody in the country knew about it. Yes, so, um, including the wife. Including, of course, the wife knows. Mm. And so um, in those, uh, there's almost this uh, unspoken agreement that uh, we'll leave well enough alone. And um, I've actually uh, talked to spouses where their wife has said to them, look, I just don't have the same desire or need. Find somebody else and just don't tell me about it. Right. But I want to stay with you. Does it puzzle you as a therapist uh, why people will risk their relationships to that degree? Oftentimes, it's because they think they can get away with it. Mm -hmm. you mean, you're talking about an affair? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, most of the time, it's because there's a sense of desperation that they're not connecting with their, their partner, especially for women. Uh, if there's just a sense he won't listen to me, he won't respond to me. He I, doesn't value he me. He doesn't value me. He tries to control me. And finally, uh, at work or something, you come across this man who suddenly lifts you up. Of course, you're getting the best foot forward. Of course. You know, like I had this one woman in Toronto mm -hmm. say, if you think you love him, imagine him sitting on the toilet. Exactly. <laughs> That's a very good point. Yeah, I'm yeah. reading a book right now, and the premise of the book is uh, she's had an affair with her boss at the office for four years, mm -hmm. four, five, six, mm -hmm. and said leave that awful wife and be with me. Leave mm. the wife, be with me. Finally, he does. Mm -hmm. Now, she doesn't want Exactly. <laughs> she thinks, I've made a terrible I, mistake. I, 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 I loved having an affair <laughs> with this man. I do yeah. not want this man yeah. in my life every yeah. day. And she started to notice, yeah. and I'm not finished the book, but she starts to notice <laughs> his little idiosyncrasies yeah. and the yeah. fact that he snorts or he watches too much television and yeah. all the things yeah. she didn't see when she was having an affair. Yeah with this yeah, guy yeah. and she really hopes his wife will take him back. <laughs> well I've always said affairs are like three-legged stools. If you take mm -hmm. out one of the, the relationships the other collapses or you've got to fix it. Right. And usually with affairs if they end you've got to fix the primary one or the person will run out and find another partner. Do women have affairs for emotional reasons and men have affairs for sexual reasons or is it the same? I believe it's emotional for both. For both? Yeah. It's how uh, somebody makes you yeah. feel isn't it? You can have sex without emotional commitment. It's done all the time. Men and women? Sure. Uh, swinging, for instance, uh, is not about the sex. It's about uh, being honest and open. Um, uh, affairs are not about the sex. It's about the deception. Mm -hmm. And it's the deception that kills relationships. But what if that turns you on? What if yeah. the danger turns you on? That's, that's what I'm talking about in terms of pathological cheating. There's an element of always the chase is on. I always have to find another partner. And a lot of that is restlessness within the person, uh, trying to cope with deeper emotional issues like mm -hmm. depression. I was reading, knowing you were coming on, I was reading an article last night about why people have sex, and there were 237 reasons. <laughs> I'm of not course. kidding. Overcoming <laughs> boredom, burning up calories, yeah. it keeps you warm. Uh, you couldn't believe it. Uh, you know, you're attracted, of course. And, and one person said, because I get closer to God. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Read the writings of uh, St. Teresa. Mm -hmm. She speaks about this incredible um, experience with God, and it's an orgasm. Well, there is that moment. Yes, of course. Feels yeah. godlike. Pity more. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. If that's what God feels like, I'm there. <laughs> okay. Uh, grieving a relationship, uh, you're shocked. Yeah. You're out. Uh, they've uh, they've let, left you, and you didn't know. Let, let me say that when a relationship comes to an end, it's usually at the end of a long time of the relationship breaking down, of someone not responding, of, of serial cheating that has never been addressed. That's when relationships usually come apart. Right. Most relationships can withstand an affair if it's uh, gotten out and if it's over and the person is no longer seeking mm -hmm. it and they're getting help for their primary relationship. But as you know, we beat ourselves up if yep. it's happened to us and yep. it's happened to 
almost everyone I know, whether in a marriage or outside a marriage, yeah. uh, everyone's been dumped once or twice yeah. or shocked. Yeah that your partner is not only having a fling with you, he's having a fling with the gardener. You go, sure, wow, sure, sure. who knew? Yeah. And you feel so dumb. Of course. Because we think of ourselves as being quite intuitive mm -hmm. and uh, understand our sure. partner and know what but they're up trust. to. And we trust and we can't imagine they would ever do that. You yeah. know, get off the porch with us yeah. Yeah. in the house. Yeah. And when they do, you feel so stupid. Well, you feel like, violated How did I well? not know? Yeah. There are some legitimate cases, I believe, in which a partner simply doesn't know. But I believe that there are clues that the partner is ignoring. And uh, when you talk to most couples in which one partner says, I didn't have a clue he was in a relationship with another man or, mm -hmm. or, or, or she was in a relationship with another woman or whatever, uh, then when you begin to uh, reflect on that, yeah, there were clues. Uh, there, were th there was this incident and that, and I just turned a blind eye. Exactly. I have yeah. a friend whose husband ran off with a man. Yes. And she caught them. Yes. In flagrante, whatever, whatever that's called. Yes. Caught them. Shocked. Yeah. Not a clue. Not a yeah. clue he was gay. Yeah. Not a clue he was fooling around. Just yeah. didn't know. Called the cops. Yes. <laughs> because she thought someone was in the house. Right. Well, someone was in the house. <laughs> but doing not what she <laughs> thought. Doing not what she <laughs> thought they should be doing. Her yeah. husband and the guy in the, in the bedroom. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. It's going yeah. to be a movie one day, I'm sure. Oh wow. Well. But she she just didn't have, and she's a really bright woman. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. a clue. Mm. Two lovely children living the idyllic life, the yeah. perfect marriage, the country well, club, the station wagon. Yeah. Mm. I'd still want to talk to them about that. Uh, right. There's something going on. Well, I just, uh, I find it really hard to believe that in an intimate relationship, uh, not, uh, that you're not getting some kind of clue that your partner is not interested in you sexually. Now, there can be bisexual oh. individuals who are having a sexually robust relationship with their partner, right. but also enjoy same sex on the side. And Do men fake it? Like if they, you say men, uh, if they're if they're having sex, getting sex, they feel their love. Most men. Most men, but do men fake it? Like I know women fake it. Fake what? Fake sex. Uh, enjoying fake sex. Mm -hmm. Pretending. Well, I think all of us have. Say the if you if you're not into your partner. Yeah. You're really not. You don't like them very oh. much. And oh, okay. Well, with men, it's a lot harder because uh, men have to get the equipment up and going. True. Women can fake it a lot easier than males can. Mm -hmm. But um, um, I, everybody is capable of deception. Uh, that's, that's part of being a human being. Uh, I know of men who fake orgasms that actually don't ejaculate at all, but they just want to get the, the thing over with. It's going mm -hmm. on forever. Um, it's much harder for a man uh, to just fake feelings with a woman because he simply it'll affect his erectile right. function. Right. Uh, what about the internet, the impact of the internet on affairs? Yeah. You're sitting home one night, your ex-boyfriend from 10 years ago writes you a little note. Yeah. You're with another, you're in a committed relationship. Yeah. Do you respond? Do you feel that's cheating or is it just connecting? Always, uh, I remember McLean's did an article on office wives, and in that, in that article, I told them that if you can involve your primary partner, it is not a threat to the relationship. And why not be in touch with an old flame as long as you're transparent and bringing your primary partner into that and saying, guess what, Fred wrote me, and I responded. And mm -hmm. let him see the, the email. Um, when a person's doing it clandestine, and uh, going behind the back, it's usually a sign that there's something missing in that relationship. And when that happens, each of them have a responsibility to step up to the plate and say, something's going on here. I'm finding myself mm -hmm. getting more involved online than with you. We need some help. And that's where counseling comes in. Exactly. And you're a good counselor. And I thank you for taking oh, the time. Oh, always a pleasure, Fanny. Nice to see you. I, I always think we should come up with a country Western song can I, after we talk about <laughs> cheating on your mind and can, how about men and mascara always run. Can I leave you with one quote? Yes. It's by Elie Wiesel, a sure. famous rab, uh, Jewish writer. Yes. He says, a very famous Jewish prayer is this, Lord, help me to live in the promise of renewal and not in the remorse of actions frozen in time. Oh, I like that. I like it too. I'm going to write that down. Thank you. Dr. David McKenzie. And coming up, hot summer eyewear. Trends uh, Vancouver Optometrist gives us some tips on UV protection and high style shades to keep you looking sexy and swell.